man, there's so much to think about when it comes to athletics and uh, maintaining optimal nutrition so that um, you can get optimal performance uh, both in your training and um, in competition. And one thing I've been noticing a ton lately and has really just caught my eye is that uh, you know, athletes, my patients, um, are complaining about poor recovery. They're complaining about uh, lack of motivation, complaining about uh, you know just getting sick all the time, and um, thinking that uh, you know they're putting uh, you know all this work, all this effort, and then their, their body's just not responding. And I'm thinking, man, uh, when I get their blood results back, you know they're putting in all this work. They're uh, but they're they're literally living they're they're functioning at, at half mass you know they do not have the full set of metabolic tools available to them even though they're putting out all this effort and so i want to bring attention to the fact that uh iron i r o n is extremely important for optimal athletic performance and this includes everything from weight training to running but uh definitely definitely more the aerobic um activities tend to cause a greater need for uh, sufficient iron levels. Um, whereas the just instant, um, mom, you know, max rep kind of things aren't quite as um, necessary to have optimal levels. Uh, you know, we often we hear about electrolytes, we hear about magnesium, calcium, uh, these minerals and these uh, um, electrolytes and we figure, you know, that's what I need. I need more electrolytes, I need more sugar, I need more caffeine. But, um, you know, all that airtime that they're getting we really need to be getting back to the foundation, which is if you can't move oxygen throughout your body, um, you have a problem. And there's no amount of extra juju, cool little supplements you can take that's going to make up for the fact that you literally cannot transport oxygen. And guess what? The only mineral that transport oxygen, that allows you to transport oxygen on a red blood cell is iron. Um, and you know, if, if oxygen transport isn't working, nothing's working, you know, nothing is performing. No cell in your body is performing at the level it should be performing at or potentially could be performing at. Uh, the only way you're able to transport oxygen is via an iron binding to it on a red blood cell and housing it around your body. Uh, this, this literally this criticalness of iron for the athlete cannot be overstated. It can't be overstated. So we, we must check our iron levels. You want to check your iron levels. You want to make sure your ferritin, F-E-R-R-I-T-I-N level um, is optimal. Because this literally, if, if it's not, then you're, you're putting yourself um, at potentially increased risk of injury, um, especially overuse injuries. Um, you're causing you know poor and slower recovery from your exercise, from your um, performances, um, and your performance itself is going to suffer. Uh, and then on top of that, many, many patients and clients have had depression, um, overall just lack of motivation, lack of drive um, for what seems like no good reason. Like they've lost their enjoyment of their sport, of their um, athletic endeavors, and all along was iron. And once, it, once iron was taken care of, once they had sufficient iron, all of a sudden, here it goes. You know, their motivation's back, their drive is back, their recovery is back. They're not getting sick all the time anymore. So do not overlook. Um, the simple little guy. If you're an athlete, the bottom line is you are at increased risk of iron deficiency. And if you're a female athlete, you are significantly increased risk of deficiency. In fact, uh, you know, one study showed that 35% of female athletes are iron deficient compared to only 5% of the general population. Uh, and uh, you know, there's this hormone called hepcidin, which increases for men and females um, after exercise. And the thing about this hepcidin increasing is that it decreases our ability to absorb and assimilate iron for, for three to six hours post-exercise. So exercise itself is making it harder for you to maintain optimal iron levels. Uh, and then there's the fact that um, we get increased iron loss from exercise, literally from the destruction of red blood cells, um, just by doing stuff that's good for us. Um, there also can be loss of iron via sweat. Um, and then uh, many people actually lose some iron via the gastrointestinal tract just because of putting out um, you know, intense um, 
activity on their body, put, you know, intense physical exertion. And then, um, of course, there's lack, just generally a lack of intake for many people, uh, you know, people on special diets, um, not getting enough whole, unprocessed foods that are um, that have easily absorbable and assimilatable um, iron. So, what are you going to do about it? Number one, like I mentioned earlier, is you got to get your fer ferritin level tested. Um, that's the gold standard. Um, along with the ferritin, I would get the complete blood um, count. I would get the total iron binding capacity, and I would get your serum iron levels checked. But for sure, get the ferritin level test. Um, the best time to test your ferritin, if you want to have it, you know, just a strong baseline to go from over and over and over again, is in the morning when you're really well hydrated and uh, at least 12 hours away from any heavy exertion. So try to give yourself kind of almost like a 12 hour workout fast before um, you get your ferritin level checked. And then uh, make sure you're not acutely ill when you do get it checked. Um, I would recommend once you have that baseline to go from, to then get your iron level checked again or ferritin level checked again uh, in one month uh, after starting supplementation or, or making you know pretty significant dietary changes and then again in six months so that uh, you can see what your trend is you know and how much uh, either iron you need to intake um, supplementally to maintain optimal levels uh, depending on your activity or um, you know what you need to do dietary wise to maintain optimal levels um, over the long term. But this is crucial, don't overlook at it. There's no electrolytes, there's no fancy drinks, there's no caffeine, there's no Red Bull, Monster, Bang, that's gonna make up for a lack of iron um, availability in your body. And you know, once your iron levels are sufficient, your ferritin levels are optimized, wow. Get ready to see performance go up, 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 and your recovery go quicker and quicker, and your desire and um, enjoyment for your athletic endeavors, for your training, to uh, drastically improve. So I'm Dr. Matt, and uh, in future episode, we'll talk about how you can, um, via lifestyle supplementation, increase uh, your ferritin levels with ease and, and maintain levels uh, so you're not um, without you know all the side effects and digestive issues and nausea and black stools you probably heard about or may have already um, uh, experienced yourself from uh, iron previously. So I'll see you next time.